We present Rodney Bewes and James Bolam as Bob Ferris and Terry Collier in part two of Whatever Happened to the Likely Lad. <laughs> Please, listen. There's a notice up there which reads silence. But I want to... I mean, I want to talk to you. Well, you can't. Not here, anyway. Well, where, then? I don't know. Look, I'm very busy. Bob, please stop pursuing me. I'm not pursuing you. I've just got a thing about assistant librarians. <laughs> well, you're in the wrong place. You'll find romantic fiction on the far side of the room. Why are you being so unreasonable? I'm not being unreasonable. Oh, uh, there's a man behind you. He wants to, um... Oh, oh. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, sir. The Godfather isn't back yet. Try again next week. And why don't you do the same? Thelma, please, listen. There's no need to get into such a state. Shh. I mean, there's no need to get into such a state. I'm not in a state. Yes, you are. You've just put insights into acupuncture under car maintenance. Oh, don't you recognise the symptoms? It's shock. Delayed shock. It's the shock of knowing Terry Collier's back in town. So what? Who's Terry Collier? He's your mate, your chum, your drinking partner, your pal. Oh, that Terry Collier? Yes, that Terry Collier. The good old days, the lads, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. The brown ale. And have you heard the one about the nun and the traffic warden? Uh, there's, there's a bit of nudge, nudge going on behind you. What? Oh, oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm awfully sorry, madam. The godfather isn't back in yet. Try again next week. Where are you going? To file some new catalogue cards. Hang on. Look, Bob, I'm trying to work. Don't you think you ought to be somewhere else doing the same? Your happiness is more important. Look, is it my fault he decides to return home, to his own home, to his own hometown? Is it my fault that British Rail thoughtlessly sold him a ticket to travel on the same train as me? It just seems funny to me that he comes out of the army and turns up here five weeks before we're getting married. Oh, I was to blame for that. I wrote to the war office. I said, please, could Corporal Collier have compassionate discharge so he can come back here just in time to drag me from the altar? Well, that's what he'd like to do. Ow! Oh, you got me thumb! Serves you right for impeding an assistant librarian in the performance of her duties. He's changed, Thelma. Honestly, he's not the same person. Seven years is a long... No, I'm sorry, sir. It's not back yet. Try again next week. <laughs> I can't understand it. There's thousands of books here, and all they all want the same one. Look, why did you two break your journey last night, hmm? Halfway home, why did you suddenly get off the train? Because he was putting the doubts in, that's why. There will now be a short intermission for second thoughts. Don't be absurd. Well, why else would you get off at Doncaster in the middle of the night? Simple. We were seduced by the distant sounds of merriment, laughter and depravity. Oh, Porter, we said, what goes on? What goes on? Why, it's Mardi Gras, man, he said. Carnival time. <laughs> Within minutes, we were caught up in the swirl of merry revelry. Young virgins knotted flowers in our hair. People swayed to the sounds of primitive jungle rhythms. Conga lines stretched up and down the length of the Doncaster bypass. <laughs> Bob, no one dances the conga anymore. Oh, what's the use in trying to explain? But where, where are you going? Doncaster. Where else? If you've never been there in Mardi Gras, you've never lived. I see. <laughs> well, before you catch the train, will you bring back our one and only copy of The Godfather? It's nine weeks overdue. <sighs> oh, where the hell has my mum hidden the flame and tea curry? Oh, oh, of course, under the tea cosy, where else? Uh, one for me, one for the pot, and one for the love of a good woman. Bye, I'll be glad of this. It's bloody freezing in here. Oh! 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 Hey, oh! What's that? Oh! What's that? A Maltese war dance? Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! What's the matter? What have you done? What have I done? I've poured boiling water all over me flaming foot! <laughs> Oh, I oh. thought you'd had an accident. Huh? <laughs> I have had an accident. Oh, God, oh, God. It's always dangerous, that. Never fool about with boiling water with bare feet and pyjamas. Fatal. You're lucky you only put it on your foot. Oh, yes. Ha, <laughs> uh ha, -huh, very funny. Well, don't just stand on the back doorstep like that. Either come inside or shut the door and go away. 
That's the second warm welcome I've had today. What do you want, anyway? Uh, milk. No sugar, please. Round here, I meant. Well, I've come to see you, haven't I? Extend the hand of friendship and welcome. On this, your first day of freedom. Huh. Come on, cheer up. You're home, aren't you? Should be a day of joy and celebration for your family and your friends and the shareholders of the Scottish and Newcastle breweries. Joy and celebration, you what? Me dad and mum aren't even home. Seven years I've been away. Well, not counting leaves, like. Seven years of hardship and toil, solitude and self-sacrifice. I get home, the key's under the mat, there's no heat in the house and there's a packet of frozen cod balls in the fridge. <laughs> it's not like your folks to be away. Bed wasn't aired, no paper, wireless needs a battery, I have a good mind to sign on again. I've started feeling homesick for the army. I've started thinking, you know, about all the places and all the lads. Been with them a long time, some of them, you know. Been through a lot together. Huey McLaren now. He was with me since my basic training. Next beds for five years, Huey and me. Surprised there wasn't talk. <laughs> You wouldn't understand friendships that are forged in combat. Combat? Tuffy Lewis was with him in Germany. The night he brained a second lieutenant with Ark Bottle. Oh, that sort of combat. Two years in the glasshouse he got for that. Still, he'd meet up with old Clarky there. And Chippy was sent up soon after. You got in with a nice set of people then. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Well, I mean, the way you're talking, it sounds like you just come out of prison, not the army. They were a good set of lads, a good set of lads. What were they known as, the Dirty Dozen? <laughs> I trust Tuffy with my life. Not me wallet, but certainly me life. <laughs> well, all that's behind you now. All nostalgia. Time to look around, isn't it? Time to plan, forge your head, get something behind you. Build for the future. Ah, oh, well, some of us have been able to, haven't they? <laughs> Not hard to see you've done all right. Mortgage and a car. A few premium bonds, have you? And I bet Thelma's got something stuffed away in the post office for a rainy day. You never liked Thelma, have you? <laughs> Not true. It's the other way round. No, it isn't. You've always resented her. And to think that about an hour ago, I was arguing with her on your behalf. Now I'm having a go at you about her. I can just see my life stretching ahead of me. My marriage is going to be like a perpetual tennis match, with you and Thelma both trying to serve for advantage. I'm going to be the ball that's bashed from one to the other, trying to love all. I'll just be a go-between, an emissary of hate. Might as well make plans for the divorce now. No point waiting to the last moment. I suppose you'd be classified as mental cruelty. Well, it's certainly not going to be adultery. <laughs> you know what you are, don't you? You're what's referred to as a just cause and impediment. I, mate, I'm a wounded ex-serviceman trying to make his way back into society. That's all I am. Rubbish. That's right. Run away from the truth. Oh, oh, now look what you made me do. I've spilled me tea on me foot. Oh, oh. Never mind. Hey, why don't you go write your sister Audrey's? She'll be ever so surprised. And when she says, where on earth have you come from? You can say, I've just come hot foot from our house. <laughs> I'll kill you! Hello, Terry. Hello, Stan. You still on the bottle, then? Aye, well, I like the fresh air. You're doing your round a bit late, aren't you? No, I always come back to the empties about this time. After the husbands have gone to work, I suppose. <laughs> oh, there's not much of that round here. All newlyweds. And most of the wives are working to help pay for the mortgage. Haven't seen you in a long time. You're looking fit, though. On leave, are you? No, I finished. No, got back last night. Get away. How's it feel? Perishing. Ah, well, you'll feel the cold up here. Wind goes right through you. In the tropics, were you? More or less. Come to see your Audrey, have you? Oh, I'm going to try and catch a cup of tea. Have you left any milk? Yeah. Suppose you'll be having a few bevies with the lads too, won't you? Oh, I'm more than likely. Are you going to be down there? Ah, depends on the wife. I see. Yeah, you'll be having a grand time. The old welcome mat out. Home is the hero, eh? The big hello. See ya. Hello, Audrey. Good 
God. Have you deserted? Oh, how warm and how touching. Is that all you can say to your little brother after seven long years? You were here two Christmases ago. Anyway, wipe your feet. I'm right in the middle of me ironing. Dear me. No, your kitchen hasn't changed. Still looks like a Chinese steam laundry. Where's me mum and dad? They went to your Uncle Norman's funeral. Who? You remember Uncle Norman over in Carlisle? Oh, aye. How is he? Well, how do you expect him to feel at his own funeral? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, he had a good innings, though, but how old was he? 88? 94. So when are my mum and dad coming back? I don't know. They're staying with your auntie for a day or two. She's 90, you know. Really? Hardly worth them coming home, is it? <laughs> if they are on a bit, they'll save themselves a double journey. What a terrible thing to say, our Terry. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm not in the best frame of mind this morning. Oh, and I think I'm starting a cold. Well, don't come breathing your germs round here. Not with a baby. What baby? We had another one six months ago. Get away. What make? A girl. <laughs> Emma Fleur. Fleur? Oh. F-L-E-U-R, like in the Foresight Saga. It means flower in French. I know what it means. Well, we wrote and told you. But then you didn't reply to any of the letters we sent. Oh, I meant to. The mail didn't always get through to some of the places I've been. <laughs> You've been in the middle of Wiltshire for the last eight months. Officially. Listen, Lord, um... Couldn't I just stay here? I mean, couldn't I just till me mum and dad get back? No, I'm sorry, you can't stay here with that cold. If one of us gets it, we'll all go down with it. And Wayne's very chesty at the moment. Who's Wayne? Oh, Terry, for God's sake, he's your godson. Oh, that Wayne! <laughs> for a minute, I thought you'd married again. Well, he's nearly five now, you know. And you owe him for four Christmases, three birthdays and a christening. Well, accept premium bonds. You never know your look, do you? By hell, I knew you could buy your way out of the army. I didn't know you had to buy your way back into Civvy Street. Well, there's some tea bags on the bottom shelf of the first cupboard there and there's some cream crackers in that tin on the table. Milk in the fridge. But go easy on the sugar because I'm making a cake for the kids. I didn't expect the freedom of the city or a champagne buffet with the mayor. But, you know, when you come back, you expect to come back to more than a tea bag and a cream cracker. Well, I can't understand why you didn't send us a card. And all the orders, wipe your feet, don't sneeze, go easy on the sugar. Don't sit there, I've just ironed that lot. Oh, I'm getting out of this. <laughs> Terry? Terry? Hey, up. Hello, Bob. Where did you spring from? This is my house. Your house? You mean you came to see it, didn't you? No, no, I didn't know this is where you planned to live. I was just passing. I was over at our Audrey's and I was just passing. I, I didn't know this was your house. Is this your house? Hey, what a coincidence. Well, there she is. What do you think? Yeah, it's a canny little house, though, but... Thelma and I haven't thought of a name for it yet. Ah, oh, well, you're going to need one, aren't you? You might not find it again. What do you mean? Well, look at them. All these houses, they're all the same, aren't they? Rows of them. No, no, these are quite different. Our living room is 16 by 12. They're 15 by 13 down there. I must be blind. <laughs> well, now you're here. Come and have a look inside. The living room. Oh, we put the carpet down last week. Uh, the sofa. Uh, that folds down to make double bed. Nice wide service hatch into the kitchen. What are all these planks? I'm building a bookcase. Underfloor central heating throughout, of course. We decided to be all electric. I mean, then I can do all the repairs myself. Uh, lots of points. They're, they're well made jobs, aren't they? What's up with you? Is this wall absolutely plumb? Of course it is. What makes you think it isn't? No, oh, nothing, nothing. I don't suppose you need worry about it. Uh, a nasty crack in that plaster. That's just settlement. There was a bit of that. There's bound to be a few teething troubles, like having a new car. Oh, I had trouble with that and all. <laughs> no, I'm not having trouble with that and all, apart from the starter motor. <laughs> now, 
Now what are you doing? Measuring. 13, 14, 15. This room's only 15 foot long, not 16. You've been done. Look, it depends on what size shoe you take, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, you've always had a large foot. Hey, let's have a look in the kitchen. Uh, uh, be careful with the hatch. Uh, don't worry, don't worry. I'm not going to break anything. Uh, no, but... Why? I must have spent a few bob on that kitchen, eh? Oh, Jesus! Flaming hatch came down like a bloody guillotine! Oh. Oh. Yes, that does need fixing. Oh, I've broken me fingers! No, you haven't. Not if you can wiggle them about like that. Oh! Oh! Look at the nice big picture windows. Stuff the picture windows! <laughs> they give bags of light. It's one of the features of this house. Yeah, but it means they can see in from right across the road. There's not much privacy, is there? Privacy? Compared to the houses we lived in as kids, this is Woburn Abbey. Still, why on earth should you be interested in all this? A fellow like you doesn't want to be lumbered with a wife and a mortgage. It's not your scene. Safety in numbers. A born bachelor. Anyone can see that. Ah, you're right. Naturally independent. A loner. True, true. There you are, then. Only one problem. What's that? I'm married. Pardon? I'm married. I am a married man. Well, say something, then. Don't just stand there. Well, surely you must have something to say. I think I've got some beer in the kitchen. <laughs> Good idea. Right, now start from the beginning. Don't skip around. I want it all. Don't just give me the recorded highlights. You can't wait, can you? Oh, sorry. Sorry. In your own time. Well, during my military career, two things happened to me which have left their imprint on me for the rest of my life. Uh, the leg? No, 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 apart from that. That I can live with. The first was when I got stoned out of my mind in Hamburg one night and got tattooed on my left buttock. <laughs> the second was on a rainy day in November 1969, my neuter Palmgarten, spinster of Munch and Gladbach and I got married. Incredible. Fact. Was she, uh... No, funnily enough, she wasn't. <laughs> Rich dad. Not especially. Had a few fennecs put aside, but nothing much. Love. That's your last alternative, isn't it? She's not pregnant, she's not loaded, so this must be love. I'm really just going on what I know of the old Terry Collier. And you always had a very simple set of values. Do you or don't you? <laughs> I'm not denying it that I put myself about a bit. I am just saying that I am capable of, well, deeper emotions. I'm not the person you used to know. I know now there is more to life than just the physical. I know there's more to people than the way they look. I've changed. So, uh, sex didn't come into it? Of course sex came into it. I haven't changed that much. <laughs> no, all I'm saying is that when I walked down that aisle, I was looking beyond bed. Maybe it wasn't love. Maybe I was looking for something else. And married quarters certainly seemed better than the top bunk in Hut 14. <laughs> we had no idea. It wasn't in the local paper. And your parents have never mentioned it. Well, they wouldn't, would they? They were dead against it. You know how my dad feels about the Germans. He won't even accept the lift in our Audrey's Volkswagen. <laughs> so, what went wrong? What went right? I suppose the main trouble was communication. No point of contact. Except for... You can't spend your whole life in bed, can you? You mean you had nothing else in common? Difficult to tell. She didn't speak English and I certainly wasn't going to learn German. <laughs> Perhaps a child would have helped. Or an interpreter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm... I I'm sorry, mate. Yeah, well, we live and learn. Of course, it would have helped if I'd had a home to come home to. I didn't want to land myself on relatives because if this... You know, this does turn out to be another bout of malaria. It's hardly fair to them. Well, you could stay at my place. No, but, no, no, uh... please, Bob, please. I don't want to cause any more trouble between you and them. I'll be all right. Well, if you're sure. Yes, don't worry. If I feel faint, I'll just ask somebody to see me across the road. <laughs>
Tell her I'll kill her. I never thought I'd hear me saying that. I never thought I'd hear you saying that. I'm human, Bob. I do have some compassion. Even for Terry? For any human being who's suffered. Is there any chance of them... No, no, no. It's, uh, it's definitely over. Such a risk marrying a foreigner. Especially Germans. They're so physical. Yeah. Yeah, you said their relationship was very, um, physical. Oh, you've been into all that, have you? Well, we touched upon it. We touched upon it. He poured out his heart. Is he still terribly upset? I would think, listening to him, he's only just learned to live with the pain. Poor Terry. And, of course, he's got precious little comfort coming home. No. If I'd known at the station, oh, poor boy, poor boy. So I thought the best thing would be for him to come and stay with me. Over my dead body. <laughs> but he needs comfort, a helping hand, a shoulder to lean on. He's not leaning on your shoulder into the small hours. I'm not having the two of you giggling in the dark discussing physical things and the good old days when you were both free oh no well what happened to all this human compassion it's still here i just don't want him staying with you discussing the perils of marriage i've got a much better idea oh yes he can stay at my mother's house i'm not having that bob it's the perfect answer in these situations a man needs a woman's sympathy but your parents are away well that means there's plenty of room definitely no Look, Bob, I'm making an effort to understand Terry, to get to know him all over again. I mean, that's what you wanted, wasn't it? You were in here this morning telling me I was being unreasonable because I wouldn't do that. Well, now I'm making the gesture to be a friend to your friend. I know. I want you to be a friend to my friend. I just don't want my friend getting too friendly. Right. Passes that last shelf and a couple of screws. Uh, you fix the other end. Right. I really appreciate you helping me finish the bookcase. OK, kiddo. Wasn't doing anything else tonight? No, but Thelma will be over the moon. Well, I'm glad we're all friends again. Can't say I'm not touched by Thelma's offer. Can't say I'm not surprised, either. Ah, you know what women are like. As soon as they hear about some personal tragedy, they want to mother you. Well, I wouldn't mind being mothered by Thelma for a few days. Could start a whole new chapter in our relationship. That's why I put my foot down. <laughs> you what? Don't you want me to be friends with Thelma? Of course I want you to be friends. I just don't want you staying there, that's all. You don't trust me, do you? I'm your best mate and you don't trust me. Of course I trust you, of course. But you could stay here. Here? Yes, yeah, the obvious place, isn't it? Thelma wants you to stay at her place. Well, this is her place and mine too. It's centrally heated, you've got radio, tea, milk, sugar in the kitchen, and we've got a bed too, the sofa, remember? I often stay here overnight. There's sheets and blankets in the drawer underneath. Be better than having you limping off into the night, nursing your malaria. Ah, oh, thanks, kid. That's great. Now, I'll come round first thing in the morning, bring you some bacon and eggs and a paper. How's that? Great. It's very good of you, mate. Listen, it's the least I can do. You help me finish the bookcase? Oh, uh, just one thing. What's that? Uh, turn the lights out before you get undressed. I mean, we've got picture windows, front and back, and no curtains. Oh. Hey, Bob. What? You didn't trust me, did you? No, I bloody didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Bob? Where are you? I can't see... Oh, are they? Fast asleep. Poor lamb. You sound full of cold. Look, I won't turn the light on. I don't want the people across the road to... Oh, darling, you finished the bookcase. Oh, you must have worked so hard. And all I do is bitch on and be unreasonable. Sorry, pet. Would you like me to stay? Bob, would you like me to stay? Look, do you want me to stay or don't you? Well, all right, I'll stay. I'll just get undressed. Oh, quick, move over. There. Mm. Aren't you lovely and warm? You could have taken your socks off. (laughs) (laughs) 
Hello, Bob. You're up a bit sharpish this morning. Makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise, Stan. Oh, does it? What can I do you for? Pint of gold top, six large eggs, pack the best bacon, half a butter and a slice crusty. You can come again. There you are, Squire. Ta. Here, keep the change. <clears throat> I'm afraid I need another 34p. <laughs> oh, sorry. How much is the deposit on a jar of marmalade? What's that? Darling, can you hear? Is there someone in the kitchen? Bob, wake up. I don't know how you can breathe under those blankets. Bob, come on, go see who it is. I can't go, I've got nothing on. Here's breakfast. Bob! Thelma, oh, what are you doing here? What are you doing there? <laughs> Hello, Thelma, what are you doing here? <laughs> have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> You'll stop at nothing, will you? But what have I done? I've been out like a light since half past ten. Ah! I warned you about that hatch. You've just been listening to Whatever Happened to the Likely Lads. James Bolam and Rodney Buse appeared as Terry and Bob, with Bridget Forsyth as Bob's fiancée Thelma, Sheila Fern as Terry's sister Audrey, and Peter Whitman as Stan the Milkman. Series created and written by Dick Clement and Ian Lafrenet. Program produced by John Browell. Listen in again next week to Part 3, Cold Feet. <laughs>